Hello. In this video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about scientific notation, what it is, what it's used for, and how you can convert from numbers written in scientific notation to regular numbers, and also converting the other way, regular numbers converted into scientific notation. Before I get into that, though, I'd like to look at two sets of numbers. This set here, uh, all these numbers have a base of 7 raised to some exponent, and in this set of numbers, the base is 10, and they are all raised to some exponent. If we look at all these 7s, 7 to the 0 power, of course, is just 1. Any number to the 0 power is 1. 7 to the 1st power is 7, then 49, 343, 2401, 16807, and the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When we move over to the uh, column here where the base is 10, the numbers are still getting bigger and bigger, but things are looking much nicer, much tidier. You can make predictions a lot easier. We start at 1, 10 to the 1st is 1, but then we just go up to 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. As we increase this exponent, we're not coming up with weird random numbers. We are just moving that decimal point back and forth. So, which set is easier to deal with? When we look at this set here, where the base is 7, if I asked you what would be 7 to the 6th power, based on the numbers you saw here, what would the answer be? And what you'd come up with is, huh, I have no idea. How am I supposed to do this without a calculator? If you came over here, though, to 10 to the 6th power, based on the pattern you see here, you would just say, no problem. I'm just going, I'm going to add a zero to whatever my answer was for 10 to the fifth. Because every time we increase that exponent, we are just adding another zero. We're moving the decimal place. So this, these sets of numbers here, where the base is 10, these are very easy to deal with. And as you'll see in a little bit, they're going to be very useful for us. Over here, not so much. Those are a little more difficult. So, as you increase the exponent, you're moving that decimal and it's getting bigger. And as you're decreasing this exponent, you're decreasing these numbers, moving the decimal point closer and closer to 1. Okay, what if I then added, let's say, instead of 10 to the 0 power, what if I added 10 to the negative first power? Well, if you remember your rules of negative exponents, 10 to the negative first power is the same as 1 over 10 to the first power, which is just simply 1 over 10, which as a decimal would just be 0 0.1. So again, I just move that decimal point from one space to the right of the 1 to one space to the left of the 1. I'm still just moving that decimal point. How about 10 to the negative 2? Well, I can rewrite that as a fraction. 1 over 10 squared. 10 squared is 1 over 100. And writing that as a decimal is 0 0.01. I'm still just moving the decimal point. Let's do one more. 10 to the negative third power is equal to 1 over 10 to the third which is equal to 1 over, 1 stays on top, 10 to the third is 1,000, and what is that as a decimal? 1 over 1,000 as a decimal is 0 0.001. So again, I'm still just moving the decimal point. These numbers here are called powers of 10, and as you increase that exponent, you're moving that decimal point to the right, as you decrease that exponent, you are moving that decimal point to the left. And that's going to be very useful for us. So, why did scientists like this set of numbers? Because exponents are easy when the base is 10. Changing the exponent just moves the decimal point. And that's why powers of 10 are used in scientific notation. So, let's look at some examples. In many areas of science, they are going to be dealing with very large numbers. For example, the mass of the sun in kilograms. 1989 with a whole bunch of zeros that go after it. 
If you had to write that number, if you were writing a paper about the mass of the sun, or you had to do calculations on it, and every time you had to write that out, or you had to enter this into your calculator, that would be a major pain. You would get sick of that really fast. So, scientists just say, well, instead of writing it out with this many zeros, let's just move the decimal place over, and we can say 1.989 times 10 to the 30th power. So they just moved the decimal point 30 spaces over and multiplied 1.898, I'm sorry, 1.989 times 10 to the 30th power. So this is for a huge number. What about for a tiny number? The mass of a proton is very, very small. Point zero 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 and on and on and on and on and on until you get to 167 kilograms. That's the mass of one single proton. But again, scientists wouldn't want to have to write that out all the time. They wouldn't want to put that in their papers. They wouldn't want to do that in their calculations or enter that in their calculator. So they shorten it. They realize that if they just move the decimal point over 27 places, the decimal point would end up right there between the 1 and the 6. So they could write it instead as 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th. They're just moving this decimal point over 27 spaces and they can shorten it up and it looks a lot nicer. So the point here is big numbers have positive exponents. Tiny numbers will have negative exponents. And that will be very important when we're doing some examples. So, let's look at this right here then. If you are going to write a number in scientific notation, the first thing you need to do is you need to move the decimal point to a place where the number that you're going to start with is going to be between 1 and 10. And that may not make a whole lot of sense right now as I'm just talking through this, but hopefully when I get to an example problem that will make some more sense. So the number here has to be between 1 and 10. Then we're going to multiply it times 10 raised to an exponent. And that exponent, that number, represents, as I said before, the number of places the ex... Ooh, I have a typo there. Not the number of places the exponent will move, sorry. It is going to be the number of places the decimal point moves. That's really annoying that I have that error there, but oh well, we'll have to live with it. So the exponent in this case represents the number of places that the decimal point moves. And this exponent, as I just showed here, is going to be a positive number if you're dealing with huge numbers like millions and billions or whatever, it's going to be a positive number. But as soon as you start dealing with tiny numbers, like this here for example, now our exponents are going to be negative numbers. So let's look at some actual examples then. Let's look at some examples. In this first section here, I'm going to convert these first three problems, I'm going to convert these into scientific notation. And for the last two, I'm going to convert these, which are already in scientific notation, I'm going to convert those into regular numbers. So let's start with this one. 7 billion. It's a big number. I wouldn't want to write that over and over again. So the first thing we're going to do, as it says right here, we need to move the decimal point to a place where this number will be between 1 and 10. So I'm going to start with 7. If we move that decimal point over to right there, uh, our number is going to be 7. Then it's going to be times 10, because remember that 10 in the base of our exponent makes things really easy. What's our exponent going to be? Well, the exponent is how many times we had to move that decimal point. So we moved it from here, we moved it over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places. So we move that decimal point over nine places. That's our exponent. Positive or negative exponent? Well, this is a huge number. Remember, big numbers have positive exponents. So we are done. Seven billion is equal to, in scientific notation, seven times 10 to the ninth. Let's do another one. Let's write 72,600 
in scientific notation. Not such a huge number, like in the billions or trillions, but it's still a pretty big number. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the decimal place, put the decimal point in a place where our number is between one and ten. So in this case, there's a seven, a two, and a six. Let's put that decimal point right there. The decimal point is going to go right in that spot right there. So 7.26 is our first number between 1 and 10 times 10 raised to an exponent. That exponent is the number of times we had to move the decimal point. And we had to start it here and go over 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So our decimal, our exponent then will be a 4. Positive or negative 4? Well, again, 72,000 is a pretty big number, so big numbers have positive exponents. And the last one in this section, here is a very tiny number, 0 0.0000056. Where is that decimal point going to end up? It's going to end up right there, because if we have 5.6, that number is between 1 and 10. 5.6 times 10 to what power? Again, it's how many places we have to move the decimal point. So we're starting there and we're going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places. So this is 5.6 times 10 to the 6th power, but don't forget, since this is a tiny number, and tiny numbers are represented with negative exponents, this isn't going to be to the positive 6th power, this is going to be a negative 6 as the exponent. So this is 5.6 times 10 to the negative 6th power. Now let's go the other way. Let's start with a number in scientific notation and let's write it out as a regular number. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this 8 and 2. The decimal point is starting out right there. How many places are we going to move this decimal point? We are going to move it 5 places because that exponent is a 5. But the question is, are we going to want to move it to the right or to the left? To the right or to the left? Well, 10 to the 5th, ask yourself, is it a big number or a small number? 10 to the 5th power is a big number. So in order to write this as a big number, we're going to need to move the exponent to the right. If we move it to the left, our answer will be something like 0 .000082, and that's tiny. We want it to be a big number, so we are going to need to move this not to the left, we're going to be moving it to the right. How many places again? We're moving it five places to the right. So let's just go from there. We're going to go over one, two, three, four, five places. There is our decimal point. And now in all these little gaps that we've created, let's draw in zeros. So there is our number. 820,000. 8.2 times 10 to the fifth is 820,000. And the last one, 2.98 times 10 to the negative seventh power. I'm going to start with writing this number here, 2, 9, 8. Our decimal point is starting right there. How many places are we going to move that decimal? We're going to move it seven times. So we want to ask ourselves though, are we going to the right or are we going to the left? 10 to the negative seventh power is going to be a tiny number. A tiny number. Negative exponents are tiny numbers. So that should tell us that we want to move that decimal point to the left in order to make this a small number. Moving it to the right would make it a big number. So we don't want to go to the right, we want it to go to the left. And again, how many places? We want to go seven places to the left. So we're starting here. The decimal point was between the two and the nine, and we're going one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven places to the left. There's our new decimal point, and we've got all these new gaps now. Let's just fill them in with zeros. So our answer, 2.98 times 10 to the negative 7th is equal to 0 0.00000298. I hope this helps. I hope it makes some sense. I hope you can see uh, the benefits of scientific notation, and I hope my conversions here uh, were making some sense to you. I hope I didn't go too quickly. Uh, so, good luck with that.